what will the next 50 years have in store for Singapore? Singapore Minister Mentor Lee Kuan Yew addressed this topic in a forum with 1,200 university students and academics. Here are the highlights. One of the trends in East Asia and in Singapore is growing prosperity, but also growing income inequality. Short of a minimum wage, what else can we do to help the bottom 20% of our citizens to live in dignity and in material sufficiency. <laughs> the first thing you learn about minimum wage is that it cuts down employment. Every country that puts a minimum wage above what the market will bear means the employer begins to mechanize and find other ways to cut employment. So our view is let the market decide and create the most employment that we can because that's the first thing you want to do. Never mind your Gini coefficient. If you don't have a job, <laughs> you get zero against those with jobs. So our first priority is jobs for everybody. And it's not just in East Asia where the Gini coefficient is getting bigger. It's happening throughout the world because it's a globalized world. In a globalized world, you find 1,200 million Chinese, most of whom, are, well, when they started anyway, are unskilled or semi-skilled, and so with India and so with Eastern Europe and many other countries. So our workers are competing against workers from these countries whose salaries are about one-fifth or even one-tenth of ours. So it tends to depress their wages. At the high end, our entrepreneurs then go abroad to invest, go to India, go to China, go to Vietnam, and some even go to the developed countries. And you've got to take with you your chief operating officers, your financial officer, your supervisor to make sure that the labor force is properly taught how to do the job and so on. So they begin to get their salaries up. They are at the higher end. They are needed to go out with the employer to train. All. Many of them are taken by the MNCs to go to China and other places to, and even to Malaya and Thailand, Bangkok. Vietnam to teach the locals how they should do the job. And you get expatriate allowances, housing allowances, ed educational allowances for their children. So that Guinea coefficient is not just happening, uh, the widening is not just happening in East Asia, it's happening worldwide. So this is a global problem and we are solving it the best way we can. Singapore has one of the fastest um, aging populations as well as one of the lowest fertility rates. And we have responded to this by importing more foreign talent. So is there a concern that this will dilute our national identity as Singaporeans? Are you a born and bred Singaporean? Yes. <laughs> well, so am I. <laughs> and, and I worry about yeah. that. Mm. We've tried all, <laughs> all methods to get the Singaporean to at least replace himself or nearly replace himself. But the uh, newer generation, I was just talking to my friend Tommy Ko and asked him how many grandchildren he has. He's only one. No, none. No, no not yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's got one son married, but no children, eight years because they're building a house. Four dogs and no children. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is a generation that has got different values. So you tell me how we solve it. We know it's going to be a problem. Fifty years' time, if we go on doing this, the born and bred Singaporeans will be from fathers and mothers who were not born and bred here. So we've got to make quite sure that they become 100% Singaporeans, so we're dispersing them all over, not allowing them to bunch together and influence each other and become a little 
little China or Indian or whatever, uh, Myanmar cliques, new conclaves, uh, where they share the same diet and uh, same patois, and uh, they remain a part of themselves. Uh, if we succeed with the next generation, having dispersed them into our schools, growing up in our environment, then even so, I'm, I'm a little bit unhappy that in, 19, in 50 years, or even in 30 years, the born and bred Singaporean, a good number will be from parents who were not born and bred here. I was born and bred here for three generations. I don't know. Third generation. Third generation. So we are completely rooted here. But uh, what's your, where are your parents from? Born and bred here? But they came here when they were very young. When they? They're from Malaysia. Oh, well, that's nearly the same. We were one country once upon <laughs> What do you think is the most, um, are the most important values and attitudes that our youth should have in order to ensure that our country continues to thrive and prosper? Thank you. You should have the same values and attitudes that your father or your grandfather had. Are you born and bred here? Uh, yes. Yeah. Your father too? Uh, yes. Your grandfather? <laughs> no. Well, your grandfather probably worked harder than your father because he came here as a migrant. As you can see, our new migrants, they push very hard to succeed in a foreign land. And it was that spirit that got us here. Had we not had people with that ruggedness, that robust attitude, we'll make it do or die, we wouldn't have today's Singapore. <laughs>